people will always try and get you to meet their standards. Standards that they have established, not the standards that God has established. Because you'll be challenging them. Right. So you're either going to be tested by tradition, or you're going to be tested by the Word. Mm -hmm. So if you're tested by tradition, people are going to look at you, and you want to know something? I'm talking about the unsaved and the saved, saints and sinners alike. Right. More often than not, are going to test you by their traditions. How often do you go to church? Yeah. That's not even correct because you are the church. You never go to church, right? right? How much do you tithe? Uh, did you put Christ back in Christmas? Mm. Do you belong to the right denomination? Do you eat the right foods? Do you wear the right clothes? Do you baptize in the right direction? I mean, these are all the traditions of men, but that's what most of the church looks at you to see whether you're a good Christian or not. The world, most of the times, they don't even care. They're not even paying attention, all right? But, so, there are far too many of those kinds of questions to ask here, to even think about. They simply don't matter in any event. And our redemption doesn't isn't based on what what you wear what you eat right not not those were those works it's a, as a matter of fact it's those things that we show as important to the world as the basis of christianity that are very the very things that hide the truth of god's love and his amazing grace when the world the unsaved the unregenerate when they look at the church and see us saying that these are the things that are important, that these are the signs of a redeemed life, that this is what makes you a good or bad Christian, is what kind of clothes you wear, how frequently you show up in a church, all those things, all those traditional men. We are hiding the love and truth of Jesus Christ from the world. Now, are we supposed to be doing that? I don't think so. Not at all. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, right? Or 14 and 15, you are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. What, while Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that we're the light of the world, these very traditions that I've been talking about, and, and more, they become the very basket that hides the presence That's of right. Jesus in our life. So what is important? What is important? Okay, That's I'm going to get to that since, yeah. you, since somebody jumped in. Okay. So our purpose in life is to show forth the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's what Peter wrote, right? Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him, Jesus, in every place. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're supposed to be bringing that presence of Christ into every place. The traditions that we have built in the church hide Jesus from the world. They don't reveal Him. They cover Him up. That's yes. a basket. So, but we're supposed to be imitating. That's important. You know, uh, Ephesians 5 1 Paul wrote and said be imitators of God beloved, as beloved children walking in love so that's where we're going to go right? Men, think about this now men and women in the world cannot see your spirit no All right? think about what, what God spoke through the prophet Samuel but the Lord said to Samuel do not look at his appearance talking about David right? Mm -hmm. or at the height of his stature because I have, oh no, Saul he's talking about now, right? because I have rejected him. For God does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's because he's talking about Saul, the first king of Israel, who the, the, the people of God thought, well, man, he is the catch me out. When was the last time you ever heard that expression, right? He was tall and handsome. He was the perfect, you know, he was the Hollywood image of what a king should be. And then when God rejects him and sends Samuel to anoint the new king, and he goes to Jesse's house, and there he finds Jesse, the father of seven sons. 
And he goes through the sun, starting from the first, the oldest, until he gets to, there's one more. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's out tending the flock. Yeah, little David, the youngest, the least mm -hmm. of all the brothers. The servants. Yes, because God doesn't judge by those outward appearances. He looks at the heart, and David had a heart after God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught